Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Bless the Lord for his goodness and for his mercies. Oh, we're back. Out for about um, two weeks, maybe. But God is good to us. And we're back tonight to give him praise and glory. In another Bible class, what a great God we serve. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to bless God for you this evening as you come to share one more time in our Bible class. I want to thank God for all of our faithful, amen, viewers, amen, who share with us each evening, amen, in the, on this Facebook Live, amen, it's just a blessing to be with you. I just want to remind you that the songs we play, we have no copyright for them, but we play them for the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you this evening. I pray that as you stay with us, Amen. That you be blessed. I pray that God will minister to your heart. <clears throat> Amen. And that somebody this evening will be motivated. Amen. To return to the fold. I'm going to invite you to bow your head with me while we share in prayer. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Amen. We pray this evening, Lord, and as we Hallelujah, share, amen, in this Bible class, that people, amen, will be blessed, souls will be revived, amen, somebody who has walked away from the fold will find out their place with you, Lord, amen, I pray that somebody be saved, hallelujah, hallelujah, call him for the name of the Lord, bless us now, I will tell you thanks, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen, amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to turn with me at this time in your Bible to the book of St. Luke chapter 15. And I'm going to read a few verses there. Amen. Verses 4 through, amen, to verse 10. St. Luke chapter 15. Let's share what it says. It says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, that that leave a ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it and when he had found it he laid it on his shoulder rejoicing and when he cometh home he calleth together his friends and neighbors saying unto them rejoice with me for I have found my sheep which was lost I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth that light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it if and when she had found it call it her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for I have lost I have found a peace which I had lost likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth I want to share with you this evening <clears throat> from the word of God and to use a man as a team down so what next down now so what next down now so what next I'm talking to somebody this evening who may be down in your spirit might be down amen financially down emotionally amen feel like giving up feel like all hope is gone. God has given me a word for you this evening. So what if you're down? What's your next move? Stay with us this evening as we share the word of God with you. 
and I'm ministering this evening to the to people who maybe once knew the Lord, maybe have not come to the Lord yet. But I'll be focusing more than ever before this evening on persons who once were in the house of God, once a child of God, but today you can't find that relationship with God anymore. I want to ask you to come with me on this journey. And I pray that at the end of this message, that you will make, a, make up in your mind to recommit your life to the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. You know, when someone backslides or becomes spiritually weak or errs, that's it, walk away, do something wrong, or someone stops in the way like you are on a very narrow road and when a car blocks the road, how do you feel when you're behind that one? I want to say this evening, what if somebody, amen, is stopping in the way, causing a traffic pileup in the church? <laughs> Look at that. Somebody stops in the way and causes a traffic pileup in the church. What should be done to that person? What should, be, what should you do to that person? Backslider, weak spiritually, heirs, blocks the road. Is Bob Marley have a song? It says, Is there a place for the hopeless sinner who has hurt all mankind just to save his own? A song, line from one of Bob's songs, One Love. How does Jesus feel about a sheep? that has strayed from the fold and is now lost. How does Jesus feel about a sheep that has strayed from the fold and now is lost? Does Jesus have a perspective on the way returnees or should be treated? Does Jesus have a blueprint of how you should treat returnees to the fold. You know, I wonder sometimes the lost sheep himself. How does the lost sheep feel having walked away from the presence of the Lord? Or better yet, walked away from serving God, walked away from committing your life to the Lord, from doing his will. I mean, yes, you sing a gospel song every now and then. Every now and then you pray. Every now and then when you remember, you read the word. I'm not talking about a casual person. I'm talking about somebody who is committed, who has a relationship. Amen. Somebody who your number one goal is to make it to heaven. I wonder what goes through the mind of that person who is coming back to the church, having left the church for a long time. What goes to that person's mind? I wonder what comes to their mind when they walk to the door of the church for the first time in 10 years, for the first time in 10 months. What question could they be asking themselves? Well, they could be saying, will my reception at church be hostile or will it be inviting? Am I walking into a cold refrigerator called the church or am I walking into a warm oven called the church? Will they be, are they happy to see me or will they prefer if I did not return? The truth be told there are persons who leave your church or your ministry and you're really not pining for them to come back. Why? The same thing about somebody who used to be employed to your company and when they, they resign, you keep a party. The same way when you were a member of a class and you graduated and the person that were so 
cold and obnoxious, you're not going to see them again. There are persons who, having left church, it makes the place a little lighter. But is that what Jesus wants? Let's talk. Are there any angels in this church to welcome me back? Or will they be driving me back to where I'm coming from? Questions the backslider is asking you or herself. And the question is, if I'm called to say something, the person is saying in their mind, what will I say? Will I let them have it? In other words, give them a piece of my mind? Or will I be humble and offer a word of apology or a word of confession? Truth is, that soldier is down. So what next? I know, and yes, we agree that that soldier is not the best most hospitable person around but it's a soldier that is down and in the army they will tell you no man left behind <coughs> you see in St. Luke chapter 15 we see where Jesus laid the restoration blueprint in other words he lays a foundation for how to restore how to welcome back a lost sheep in St. Luke 15 and verse 4 Jesus asks the question <clears throat> what man of you in other words which man around here a woman having 100 sheep if you have one of them, if you lose one of them, <clears throat> don't you leave a 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until you find it? Good question. Jesus asks the question. And I want to ask the shepherd this evening, do you know how much sheep have been put in your care somebody said I have a big church <coughs> well so does Microsoft a big company so does Amazon a big company so does Grace Kennedy a big company so does Satikor <coughs> a big company <coughs> they know how much sheep how much people work for them and so I ask your pastor with all the baptism you have been doing do you know how much people how many sheep are under your care because it really doesn't matter how large a church is you know every person who baptizes in a church is a sheep that has been added to your care and I don't matter how much you delegate and how much you put it out there you need to know how much sheep is in your care because the sheep <clears throat> this shepherd in St. Matthew 15, St. Luke 15 knew how much he had he had 100 valuable sheep and somebody might say boy <clears throat> um, well sheep is being born every day doesn't matter if you're gonna give account we've got to know how much to give account for so valuable that each one had to be count accounted for and safely rescued each night so when the shepherd <clears throat> does not come home sorry when the sheep does not come home the shepherd know that he has to launch a search party because a sheep is missing it's important I say this to all our responsible <clears throat> leaders around it's important for you to know how much care or how much persons you're being you're called upon to give account for Jesus said 
Now what the gentleman did when he or the shepherd did when he recognized that a sheep is missing he launched a search and the Bible said <clears throat> when he found the lost sheep he laid it on his shoulder and the, the word that is used the Bible said rejoicing I want you to understand ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters <clears throat> that the return of a soul to God is very important <clears throat> but before the shepherd can even introduce the lost sheep to the fold he has to have his own private personal moment in order though to have that moment that shepherd had to leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which was lost until he found it because it's important a soul is valuable there are many times as a pastor someone will ask your pastor are you meeting with that person are you going to be wasting listen to the word are you going to be wasting time on that person are you going to be spending time to look out for that person but let me tell you something the sheep the soul the value of a soul of a sheep <laughs> cannot be measured jesus died for every single man although collectively he died for all of us but when he was on the cross the seven billion of us in the world was on his mind and the 40 billion that has died before when he was on the cross every one of them was on his mind the shepherd at his private moment because the sheep that was lost has been found the sheep that was down the next move is back on the shepherd's shoulder oh thank you jesus the question is when the shepherd finds his sheep does he keep it to himself or oh, no in verse 6 the bible says and when he come at home he called it together his friends and neighbors saying unto them rejoice with me for I have found my sheep which was lost rejoice with me having had his own private moment with his sheep the Bible said the shepherd now carry home the sheep call the neighbors who are very oh he wants them to be a very integral part of the celebration truth is a lost sheep has been found and brought back home brought back home to the fold every sheep out there is exposed to the wolves the dogs the hyenas the 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 um, the, 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 the lions the tiger the cougar you name it but when that when that sheep is safely in the fold no harm can come of that sheep that is why we want to give god thanks for jesus christ himself who came amen and is our good shepherd he said i am the good shepherd amen and he said my sheep know my voice they know the voice of jesus but let's look at even a bigger moment because the shepherd said to the friends rejoice with me for i have found my sheep that was lost but let's look at the bigger picture now because nobody thought that heaven heaven would come alive because one sheep come home but the bible said likewise joy shall be in heaven my god you mean the busy God <clears throat> takes time to rejoice over one person who cannot define two pairs of shoes, one person who cannot define a man's steak for dinner this evening? Yes, the Bible said 
there's joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. More joy in heaven than the 99 just persons who are together in the fold. Amen. There's greater rejoicing over one lost soul that has been found. God, hallelujah, he values, he, he values a soul. And you on the on this um platform this evening, amen. Who amen, your feet so uh, cast away, your feet so rejected, you feel that like nobody cares. I want to let you know that heaven is waiting to string up the band, amen, because you are coming home. Jesus has given us the blueprint for restoration and he's simply saying to us that every soul, every sheep that belongs to this fold is as valuable as a sheep that is not yet in the fold. I want to let you know this evening that our God, he cares about you. And he not only keeps rejoicing, amen, to those around him, but he, he, he wants your neighbors to know that you are no longer in sin. You have found, as a matter of fact, Jesus has found you. Somebody said, I found Jesus. Well, somebody said he wasn't lost. You were lost. But whatever you want to find it, Jesus has brought you now into the fold. And when you come into the fold, he's going to search your ears because you search the ears of the, of the, of the sheep for any tick that, tick that might be in the ear. You're going to pick it out because the tick is an irritant to the ear of the sheep. Jesus, even when he brings you to the fold, oh glory to God, he, he, he's, he takes care he, he, and want to ensure that you eat, you sleep, Amen. You have fellowship. Amen. Your family is together. Amen. Your, your, your business is doing well. You are healthy. He wants to take care of every aspect of your life. That's a good shepherd we have. And so, let us, look, let us test now the blueprint. Because having set the blueprint of a shepherd who is going to go for his sheep, and bring a sheep in the fold. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you a story. He said, listen to this story. A man had two sons. A young rich boy got up one day and decided to leave home. Here is somebody who lacked nothing. His father had enough resources to divide between his brother himself and still more than enough was at home to carry on the family business in other words when this young man decided to leave home he had no good reason to walk away from the shelter of daddy's home but he did it and I want to ask a question how do you explain how someone who is very active, useful, anointed, favored of God, and blessed of God, just get, just get up and decide to leave the church. How do you explain that? Things are going well for you, but the, 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 the testing and the enticement of the world pulls that one out of the church i want to say brother pastor that people leave a church for various reasons some has already gone and unfortunately brother pastor some more are going to leave because no matter how beautiful and how comfortable the cradle of the fold is there's always somebody wondering what's on the other side. There's always somebody saying to themselves, it's better on the other side. I've heard people speak so lowly of the church family. They speak so harshly 
of their church brethren. They mark the church very hard. They said it them inside are wicked. They don't help nobody. They don't care for anybody. Yet that same person has been working in your employ with a boss man who wants to sexually amen molest you. Who wants us who wants to take away your pay? Who wants to dock your leave? Who want to treat us so badly? Amen. When things when things are needed to do the work. They don't, they don't provide it at all. Yet you have been working there for the past 20 years. And you complain, but you keep working. But you let something go wrong in church one time. And you tell yourself, I'm not going back. But people leave a church for various reasons. But the question is, do you remember what is your next move? Brother Shepherd? This person that was a murmurer, complainer, somebody who, amen, really was, you just out and out. But the, the blueprint that Jesus has left is that this person is now down. A soldier has been hit. And our next move is what Jesus said as his blueprint go look. For the sheep. You mean I must go and look for that person who has no manners? I must I, I must close the door of the fold and thank God 99 is in here and forget that one. Oh no. I want to tell you that this is the most humiliating part of the work for the church. As you will never know where the search for that fold, for that shepherd will lead. Sometimes in trying to find that sheep, it is the worst place they are gone where you'll never want to be seen. They are gone to far places, bush. They have taken some serious highways and it's gone. But I want you to remember the blueprint that Jesus set. He said, go search for that sheep. Because there's a next move. There's a next step. Though they might be lost right now. There's a next step. There's a next step. Amen. There's a next step. And so. The question is. Where is the sheep gone? How where do I know where to look now? You see. Who sent you away brother? Or who pushed you out of the church sister? Who was it that pushed out of the church? I want to ask me to subscribe that I've been around long enough to know that for many people, before you leave church, you've got to find a reason why you're going to leave. And so for many people, you just look, look, look and hope that somebody gets on top of your last nerve, then you leave. But I want to say, some people are going to say, boy, the deacon was not too nice. The evangelist preached on me. And by, as a matter of fact, it was a pastor why I'm gone. He pushed me out of the church. She pushed me out of the church. And I couldn't stay there anymore. In the case of the young man in our story, in St. Luke, amen, chapter 15, the Bible said he went into a far country and he wasted his money he had a whale of a time going to every party and you know that when you have money you have a lot of friends when you have money a lot of people know you but you know as long as you have the money as long as things are going well then man you're gonna have a whale of a time i've met many backsliders who tell me that they're not coming back to church who me not going back up there but you know what the bible said he spent everything he spent all because can i tell you that your time of gallivanting your time of excitement will not last forever 
because there's no better place than in the shepherd's fold. It doesn't matter how many sheep is bundled up in there. It's always better, my brother, my sister, than to be in an environment where the lions can tear you apart. It's always better to be in the, amen, in the shepherd's care than to be out there in the cold where it's lightning and thunder and storm. Amen. Many times will come at you. Because the Bible said, after a while, the young man is now broke. He had spent everything. And as a matter of fact, to add insult to injury, famine was now on the land. Oh, glory. What do you do when you are broke and there's no friend around you now to look out for you? Many people, you talk to them, they tell you that their best friends are outside of the church. Well, my question to you is, now that you are broke, busted, and disgusted, why is it that your best friends are not coming around anymore? Something tells me that they are only going to be your friend for as long as it suits them. But I have a friend, hallelujah, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. He says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me. A friend of Jesus, oh glory. Oh, what bliss that one so weak as I should ever have a friend like this to lead me to the sky friendship with jesus fellowship divine oh what blessed sweet communion jesus is a friend of mine the question is there's famine now you have nowhere to go you're broke and all your friends that used to hang around with you you can't buy them a flask anymore so they are gone to another friend who can buy them a whole bottle. The question is, why should the church have compassion on someone who chose to get up and leave the warmth of the presence of God? Why should the shepherd leave his 99 to go look for a sheep that it might take him years to find. I subscribe to you in saying that our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, he laid the blueprint. He said that when your sheep has been lost, we have to go out and search for that sheep. Here some a songwriter said, Throughout the lifeline across the dark wave, there is a brother or a sister who someone could save. Somebody's drifting far from the shore. Throughout the lifeline, away and away. You see, as you, the shepherd, is thinking of looking for that sheep, the sheep also is having an embarrassing time because having left your house having left in a huff and a pageantry and for the sheep now to be broke and destitute for the sheep now to be poor without any backup was never a part of the script backsliders Never believe that one day a situation would come where that guy, that Prince Charming that they left the church for would ever leave them for another Alice in Wonderland. Somebody would never believe that that sweet um, uh, Mona Lisa would leave you, amen, for a king's stick who when he smiles is uglier than when he's serious. But you know, 
it happens when you are on the highway amen and things are going well who can tell you that you would run a run a drift you would run amen into the ground and be grounded but the love of god is important thing you see the sheep never thought that being broke and friendless was a part of the script so the decision of that sheep to return home is going to be hard it's going to be humiliating for the lost sheep the plan for stardom and the hype has missed they never hit the goal they thought they would have made it but alas it never happened the sheep is going to realize that the safest place for that person right now is back in the fold because there's something about the fold no matter how the, the, the desert is cold once bodies get together they warm each other so the bible declares that iron sharpened iron so is the countenance of one to another the devil is a deceiver the devil is a cruel taskmaster he's a thief he thieves he, he steals your hope he steals your aspirations the devil will mash you up laugh at you but thank god our shepherd has never stopped looking out for us has never stopped looking for us and so the devil tramples you and you feel useless you feel that god has no use for you let me give you good news because of the 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 vile of the sinner is a rich of the blood of jesus hallelujah hallelujah when peter denied jesus he thought that it was over but when jesus came back from the dead he said to his disciples amen he said go into jerusalem and meet me there but like a good shepherd he says in the table granted that peter would turn up he said and tell peter also to come and see me glory to god we have a friend amen a god who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities he knows what you're going through my friend don't stay out in the desert and die you are down now but the question is what's next you see the last sheep out there when there's famine has to find a way to stay fed the lost sheep when there's a famine has to find a way to stay warm because that sheep is still a person and this is something i'd like to talk to our leaders about a backslider is not an animal sometimes in referring to people we use some real degrading words like old backslider and the old backslider i want you to know that that person is still a human being he has erred he has walked away from the fold he may have spoken very badly about amen the church and god's people but is still a human being is still a child of God that has erred but God is waiting for to come back to the fold and yes we have some people who leave church they are rude they are disrespectful they have no regard they speak ill and they speak crazy nasty things about the church they lie about the pastor they speak badly about the evangelist they carry the church business and they threw it out there but i'm here to remind you that they are still a person oh lord this young man still needed comfort he still needed warmth and not because he left the daddy's house meant 
that his skin now became um, steel instead of flesh. He still needed attention. Oh, glory to God. The last sheep, he was forced to seek a job. A job that in good times, he would not be caught dead doing that job. The young man was feeding swines. And he came from an orthodox Jewish background. They don't love pigs. They don't touch pigs. But when trouble caught him, the only job available was to, was to feed the pigs. And things got so bad that the Bible said at times, sometimes, he would think of eating what the pig ate. The Bible said he would fain eat of what the pig ate. In other words, he would think about it. He would want to do it because he's hungry. Have you ever wondered how some people get attached to some relationships that under normal circumstances, when they were in the fold, in the church, they always spoke out against a relationship like that. Yet, when they are out there, and things really get bad and really wow the bible said sorry when things get real crazy they will hook up with anybody it is called desperation it is a kind of desperation that a shepherd though will hope that you'll get because it is when you are in desperation that you'll be forced to find your way back home there are some people who have left my own ministry as a pastor and i wish they would get real desperate and things get real bad and for them to find their way back home because i know when they come home we will take care of them we'll pour in oil in their wounds amen we will we'll put them up and put a blanket over them comb their hair give them a shower because the best place to be is in the fold it is that kind of desperation that the shepherd want to see you see the shepherd cannot always come where you are you know let me be care about careful about it. because the bible said this young man he went into a far country daddy never knew where he was gone boy just take boat take plane and he's gone but you know something when desperation hit him the young man had no choice but to pack whatever bag he had left pack his bag and head back home i want to tell somebody this evening in this bible class but i don't care how long we don't care how long you have left the fold your space is always in the fold because there's always room for expansion the word of god says there's room at the cross for you though millions have come there is still room for one you there's room at the cross for you come on now the lord is calling you back home to the fold I want to let you know, my friend, let's read, amen, desperation, what it does. St. Luke 15 and verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? When last of somebody prayed for you? When last of somebody laid hands on your sheep? When last of somebody said, talk to me, let me hear what you're going through. The Bible said, when he came to himself, the young sheep, young man said, I will arise and go back to my father. You see, having recognized in verse 17, amen, that he was no more a man worthy. He, he said, in my father's house, there is spear bread. There is bread to spear. 
the Bible said, amen, in verse 17, the young man said, I perish with hunger. And when desperation set in, in verse 18, the young man said, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. In other words, whenever there's desperation, there's going to be a get up and go back home. There's going to be a get up and go home. I want to look, let you know that you've got to understand that the young man said further and he's going to say, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. He said, make me as one of your hired servants. In other words, this young man now was moving from the hype. He no longer, a man in no money, he was broke. He was thirsty. He was hungry. So the hype can't work anymore. I don't see a desperate backslider who is full of hype. You're not desperate yet. Because anytime you get desperate, you're going to say, I will arise and I'm going back to my father. And I will confess I have sinned against heaven and against the daddy. Get up and go home. Help the shepherd to find you. The Bible said he was a far away, but anywhere home is. That's where he's heading now. Amen. He's going to get up. He's going to get up. You know why? I've got to go home. So in verse 20, the Bible said, And he arose and came to his father. He arose and came to his father. You know, this is a most critical moment because the question is, how will daddy accept you coming home? Will daddy just ignore you? Will daddy just say, well, I never send you nowhere. Go find a room on the back. Let's go back to the blueprint that Jesus set. Back to the blueprint. How does a father react to a boy or react to a son, react to a daughter that has wasted your inheritance. No, you are broke. No, you couldn't tell when last you get a shower, dirty and destitute, and heading back home. Smelly. Oh, glory to God. But remember the blueprint. The blueprint has in it joy. There must be joy on your return. So, although you are so desperate, and things are not going as it should. Look out, my friend, because as long as you hit the fold, there's going to be joy again. Oh, glory to God. I don't know how to go back to those people. I don't know how to um how to relate to them again. I don't even know what to say to pastor. In the name of Jesus, no plan, no say. Just make sure though that you are planning to, amen. The, uh, later on, I'm going to show you the only plan that you must be making. But right now, the bigger plan is to get up and head back home. Hallelujah. It's better back in the fold. It's better back in the fold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible said, he head home. Glory be to God. <laughs> I'm home once more. It is okay to go home. Because when daddy saw the boy coming, how would daddy know that the boy is coming home today? Because friend, you know what? Daddy was always sitting on the patio, on the veranda, at the top of the lane, he was always telling himself that one of these days, my son is coming home. Oh, glory to God. When daddy saw him, the Bible said, he had compassion on him. You can never break the compassion of our Lord. He ran to meet the boy. He fell on his neck, hugged him up, kissed him, and yes, he was dirty, he was smelly, he might be having a corona, but daddy said, 
my son that was lost is coming home this is hard for daddy it is not easy for daddy to hug up a boy who wastes his money go on go live his life but there's something about a daddy's heart it is called the heart of compassion you will never out compassion a father when he has compassion in his heart he will go to the bottom of the pacific ocean without a, 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 a diving suit to rescue his fallen child because it's a compassion of a dad amen but i want you to watch something here it was easy for the young man to forget his promise and to forget that he said that he was going to make a word of compassion why it was easy because the reception he got was not the one he was expecting he was expecting condemnation he was expecting daddy to say boy where you going you come back to my house who tell you to come back here the bad boy was expecting but what he got was the opposite he got the compassion of a daddy so he could easily bask in the compassion because this is a missing part this is a missing ingredient in many grand return to the fold many people when they come back to the, the church i will see how they will accept me if they are nice to me i will be nice if they are not nice to me i will not be nice my brother when you are desperate you have no time to be planning about what the reception is going to be like because when the wolf is chasing you lions are chasing you um you name it is chasing you you are dirty you want to shower all you want to do is to get back in the fold my god but the boy did not forget did not forget his word of compassion the same way david did not forget his word of confession in Acts psalm 51 verse 1 david said have mercy upon me O god according to the loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression david said wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin amen amen for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me here david against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest david knew that daddy was compassionate glory to god david knew that daddy had received him amen back in the fold but david also knew that he had to have a word of come of confession so the bible said in chapter 15 verse 21 and the son when daddy fell on his neck kissed him loved him up the boy said and he said i have father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son he made his confession a broken and a contrite heart oh god if thou will not despise oh glory to god amen now that the confession is out of the way glory to god what do i do the bible said it's party time now glory because in chapter 15 verse 6 the shepherd when he found his lost sheep he said to his neighbors rejoice with me for i have found my lost sheep rejoice with me in chapter 15 verse 22 to 24 here is what the shepherd said now the shepherd the father now he said to his servants he said bring forth the best robe glory to god put it on him and put a ring 
on his hand and shoes on his feet for this my son that was dead and is alive again oh glory he was lost and is found and they began to be merry yes when the sheep come home there's gonna be rejoicing not just in daddy's house but rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repented moving all the saved bishops and evangelists and choir members in the church god when there was some sinner come home glory to god there's gonna be fireworks in heaven because it means one less soul going to the pit of hell hallelujah hallelujah come on my brother come on my sister the lord is calling you home amen hallelujah the return of the last sheep although can stir many emotions because not sometimes it can cause a blowback because someone might say pastor is a real fooly how you even take back that one night church after what them do but not everyone will rejoice for you because you come back home but note this we have no other alternative but to follow the blueprint and Jesus' blueprint says we must rejoice because this is the last sheep has come home we can't help but follow the blueprint jesus call said the man called his neighbors and said let us rejoice the lost sheep has been found i'm going to be praying for you right now the lost sheep he was down so what next he is back in the fold on the shoulder of the shepherd Rejoice with me. Rejoice with you. Home. Home once more. The prodigal return to his home once more. So I'm down now. What next? In a few moments, I'll be back on the shoulder of my shepherd because he has been waiting a long time to see you come home heavenly father there are some people on this platform right now lord who feel who feel that you are given up on them and god that you have no space in the fold for them lord but their space was never taken away i pray now in the name of jesus but oh god they will be desperate lord to make that decision to come back home lord because in the home there is warmth there's food there's water there's protection there is love hallelujah there's compassion i pray in the name of jesus that somebody lord will come home and recommit their life to you thank you for hearing me now in jesus name thank you the songs we play we have no copyright for them but more so my brother and sister right now as you contemplate what next come on come on come out of the cold come out of the danger come on the master is waiting for you the shepherd has made provision for you come home god bless you my friend i want to thank you for sharing with us this evening and i pray that as you were sharing that your heart has been blessed you are being touched i invite you to share with me 876 850 6267 share with us as we seek to help you to find your way back home in this darkness god bless you see you next week god's willing same place same time amen in jesus name amen